Welcome to lesson 21, where we prove certain statements using mathematical induction. Now, mathematical induction is a process that works like a domino effect. What we do is we've got a statement defined for a subset, an infinite subset of the positive integers. And what we do is we take the smallest element of that subset and prove it. We prove the statement for that element. And we call this the base case. So there are three parts. There's the base case, where we prove the statement for the smallest element in our set. Then we establish an inductive hypothesis. So in the inductive hypothesis, we assume the statement is true for n equals some constant k. And then we prove the inductive step where using the inductive hypothesis, we show that the statement is true for n equals plus 1. So with these three steps, we've got the domino effect. Now we've shown with the base case that the statement is true for 1. So if I can sh assume any k and then prove n equals k plus 1, then I, I can say, well, I've shown the base case, so I've shown this is true for k equal to 1. Then I know it's true for n equal to 2. Then I can say, well, k n can equal 2, then I know it's true for n equal to 3. Then if I know n is tr it's true for n equal to 3, I know it's true for 4. If I know it's true for 4, I know it's true for 5, so, so on and so forth. With these three steps, I have shown it is true for all of the integers in my set. Now let's prove the formula that sums the first n positive integers. So here I've got sigma i, where i goes from 1 to n. This indeed refers to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way till n. Okay, it's another way of writing the sum of 1 through n using sigma notation. All right, and sigma here mean, means sum, and I'm plugging in 1, 2, 3, etc., all the way up till n into my expression here, which is i and I'm summing these up, okay? So this is equivalent to proving the statement one, the sum of one through n is simply equal to n times n plus one over two. Our base case is the case where we apply the smallest value of n. In this situation, the smallest value of n is n equals one. So we're going to plug in 1. On the left-hand side, we'll simply get 1 because we're just adding the first term. And on the right-hand side, we're going we're to get 1 times 1 plus 1 all over 2. And so the left-hand side gives, gives us 1, and the right-hand side gives us 2 over 2, which is also 1. So we've proven the base case. Now the next part of our proof involves proving the inductive step, but first we need to establish our inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis says, I'm going to assume this statement is true for n equals k. Well, what does that mean? That the sum of the integers from 1 through k is given by k times k plus 1 all over 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this the k plus 1 term. Okay, I'm going to add to both sides the k plus 1 term so I could show the inductive step or that the statement is true for k plus 1. So I'm going to add k plus 1 to this side. And I'm going to add k plus 1 to the right-hand side. When I do this, when I add k plus 1 to the left-hand side, then I'm, I'm through with the first part 
of my inductive step, I've actually established the left hand side to go from 1 to m plus 1. Okay, now I need to make sure, or actually k plus 1 here. Now I need to make sure that the right hand side gives me the same formula as when I plug in k plus 1 for n, right? So what do I do? I get a common denominator, which is a denominator of 2, and then I'm going to expand the k times k plus 1, and then I'm going to add to it my second denominator, which is 2k plus 2, and I get k squared plus 3k plus 2, which indeed can be factored as k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 2. So what I've just shown is that the statement works when I assume n equals k plus 1. It works when it... What I've just shown is when I assume n equals k holds true, I've shown that n equals k plus 1 also holds true with regard to my given statement. Our second example is going to involve a divisibility problem. We're going to prove that 5 to the nth minus 1 is divisible by 4. Now, because this is not stated, there's no restriction, I'm going to assume my base case is involving n equals 1. So let's find 5 to the 1 minus 1 is 4, and 4 is indeed divisible by 4. So we've proven the base case. Okay? Now, the inductive hypothesis says... I am assuming the statement is true for n equals k. So I'm assuming that 5 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 4. And I'm trying to do the inductive step where I show 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is divisible by 4. Okay, this is what I get when I try to find, when I try to say n equals k plus 1. So let's do the inductive step. Now 5 to the k minus 1 is divisible by 4 means 5 to the k minus 1 is 4 times some integer a. Okay, it's got 4 as a factor. Now, then I can say 5 to the k is simply 4a plus 1. Then 5 to the k plus 1 is simply 5 to the k times 5. Well, if I multiply both sides of this equation by 5, I get the right hand side equaling 20a plus 5. And then I can say, well, 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is simply 1 less than this guy. So it's going to be 20a plus 4. And here I can factor out a 4. And I'll have 5a plus 1 in the parentheses. Well, if I can factor out a 4, and I've got an integer here, then I know that this expression is divisible by 4. Now, we've done a mathematical induction proof for um, a sigma formula uh, in a divisibility situation. And now we're going to do the third kind that we're going to cover in this class which will be an inequality, okay? So here we've got, for n, a positive integer bigger than or equal to 4. I've got this statement, n factorial is bigger than 2 to the n, okay? Our base case is therefore going to be n equals 4. So what happens when we plug in n equals 4? We've got 4 factorial bigger than 2 to the 4th. Is this true? 4 factorial is 24, and 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. 24 is indeed bigger than 16, so we've proven the base case. Now, the inductive hypothesis says the statement is true for n equals k. 
okay? So we're going to assume k factorial is bigger than 2 to the k, okay? That's what we're assuming. And then in the inductive step, we're going to prove that k plus 1 factorial is bigger than 2 to the k plus 1. All right, now. Let's work a little bit to the side here. We can say that 2 to the k plus 1 is no other than 2 to the k times 2 to the 1. So to get from this inductive step, from the inductive hypothesis to this step, it looks like I'm going to multiply this side by 2 to go from 2 to the k to 2 to the k plus 1. And to get from k to k, k factorial to k plus 1 factorial, well, k plus 1 factorial is no other than k plus 1 times k factorial, right? So it looks like I'm multiplying this k factorial by k plus 1 to get k plus 1 factorial, and 2 to the k with 2 to get 2 to the k plus 1. Well, what can I say about k plus 1 and 2? k plus 1 is certainly bigger than or equal to 5, which is indeed bigger than 2. So if I multiply one side by k plus 1, and I multiply the other side by 2, the inequality still holds. Because I'm multiplying the bigger side with a number that's even bigger than what I'm applying the smaller side. So here I've shown my inductive step. In lesson 21, we have seen proofs by mathematical induction. We've applied the three parts of the process of proof by induction to three types of problems. Ones that involve formulas, proving a formula, defined on positive integers, uh, Another kind involved a divisibility statement. The third kind that we did involved an inequality statement. I hope this lesson has been useful, and I'll see you in the solutions to Worksheet 21.